with all this experience, what did you see change in the fights on the field with you bringing this into play? Well, I think one of the first things that happened is you had a lot of people who would swat sticks once or twice mm -hmm. and then sort of almost by mutual agreement just mm -hmm. come together because they were both afraid of being hit at distance so they would have both agreed to ah, smash and close uh, smash sticks not even each other mm -hmm. and close and then do bad blue belt jujitsu slash MMA on the ground mm -hmm. and so I, you know there's a lot of fights like that at the gathering particularly in those years and I think a lot of people said oh the dog brothers are this the dog brothers are you know no technique that it uh, you know the you know I think that was just the less experienced people at a certain point in their evolution. But as time has gone by, the, the stick grappling game has evolved. And um, I fought till I was 48, but you know, you always, you always have this thought of, well, I'll come back and fight once or twice more, because it was my ace up the sleeve, I've been reluctant to let it out. And is that why it's finally coming out now? Yeah. Um, I had, uh, you know, I decided to do it, you know, just I'm too old to fight at gatherings anymore and I had had injuries. I had had a, a double tear in my adductor here and that set me back for quite a bit. And then I finally worked my way out of that and I was in the best shape I had been in for years back in uh, fall of 2013. And I was um, in the, uh, an MMA sparring class over at the UFC gym that was being run by Christoph, I can't pronounce the last name, Kaczynski, something Polish with lots of consonants next to each other. He's the, bad, he's the villain fighter and uh, here comes the boom, the yep. final fight. Yep. You know, so I think he was something like six and three in the UFC and you know, the Polish experiment I think was his nickname. And you know, formidable specimen, he's, he's doing a lot of high level stunt work in Hollywood now. <laughs> And so he was running the class and it was mostly about getting young amateurs ready to fight. Mm -hmm. you, know, you know, so most of the guys there were under 10 fights and I was sparring this one guy in particular I was working time machine game. Mm -hmm. And so when he was looking to drop and come under, he's impaling himself on my bolo punch. I got him really well and one time when he staggered, I did a, a, a hanging spin throw, head and arm throw where you spin the leg under and I came out and they're all going, get down old man, mm -hmm. and you know, at my age you live for that. Yeah. And, um, so the next round, I, I backed off a bit because it was about getting him ready. Mm. Um, and there was a moment after I staggered him with the, with the bolo, um, I went for double under hooks, but a little, little bit lazily. And so he was able to pinch his hands together. So my elbows were together like this and he stepped through and he did a hip throw and we landed on top of my shoulder. Mm. And that's when this ligament here snapped, mm. level three shoulder separation. And so for the past 15 months, 14 months, it's all been about recovering from that. And so, of course, what do you do when this is here? You start working more here. So then back in August, I pulled my hamstring. And yeah, blah, blah, blah. Right. And uh, so ideally, I would have liked to wait um, another six or nine months before shooting this stuff. But, uh, you know, the, the Gong Fu dog, he has some material that we're going to be re releasing uh, very soon. And there's other people who were in a dog, uh, not dog Andrus, uh, C Dogma uh -huh. out of Slovenia. Um, they, the two of them and, and Lonely Dog, they're like my kitchen cabinet for stick grappling. These, uh -huh. you know, you know, we say, well, what do you think of this? And you know, you know, this and that. And so uh, it's good having them to uh, stimulate my thinking and keep me current. Uh, Thomas is a superb black belt. And Andras is uh, at a level where he's competing for the qualifiers for Abu Dhabi, uh, which is also a pretty good level and lonely dog is of course you know lonely dog and so um, after this DVD there's going to be other ones there's going to be this is the first of a whole stick grappling series from dog brother martial arts the next one is going to be Thomas's and uh, lonely dog appears on it gong Fu dog is Thomas um, maybe something from uh, C dogma boo dog has some wonderful material for um, when you have guard and the other man succeeds in standing. Uh. And uh, because of my knee injury, my hips are diminished. You know, over the years, the hip was dislocating continuously because the hamstring had adhered to the femur. No one knew it. My gait was off. And so this hip was always dislocating, blah, blah, blah. But you know, the fact is my hips just, you have to have good hips for good ground and my hips are deteriorated. Um, and so there are things, if I'm, uh, if I'm down and the other man's up, I don't get up very gracefully anymore. Not that I did much to begin with, but it's worse now. 
And so it's time for me to leave room for other people to fill in other aspects of the game, but it will be me who's saying, well, I think this is sound. this may not be so sound. We're not going to, you know, you know, I filter this one out, but you know, oh wow, this is some really good stuff. Everybody, you know, come check this out. And uh, I, I think it's a really fascinating game, and it is a very good game in the ritual space, combat, ritual combat, but it is also very good for developing awarenesses for die less often. The weaponry awareness in grappling range is so often people. They have grappling skills and they have weaponry skills, but or they may, you know. But when they get in a, the grapple, they just assume there's no weapons because that's the way they always did it. Um, or even if they know there's a weapon, because their skills are grappling, you will do in the adrenal state where you've tested in the adrenal state. We see this in Die Less Often One, where the the BJJ black belt with the tapper nap T-shirt says he's watching us do force on force drills against knife. And he's saying, well, can't you just do a double leg takedown? So we got the waiver and the uh, permission to use the footage, sent him in there, and he did a beautiful double leg takedown. He got stabbed five times in the neck. I mean, he already, he was so confident in his jujitsu skills because he had so tested them that he wasn't able to process that when a knife is there, it's different. And so uh, in the US open gatherings, we now allow hidden knives to be drawn, weapon access during fight, what if? And so, you know, this game here is, develops just the mental mindset of keeping track of weapons and that things change. It's not just the em empty hand rules need to be, you know, some need to be dropped and some need to be modified. That's back to mental fluidity. Ment exactly. And so, um, for the logic of DBMA, where we look for consistency across categories, just simply the stick grappling on a deep level prepares people to have the kind of mind that's scanning for weaponry concepts in the context of grappling.